In this video, you're going to learn how to create a college football betting model utilizing ESPN's Football Power Index ratings. Hello everyone, Jonathan with Excel Help Now. Today's video is just in time for week one of college football. I'm going to show you how to utilize ESPN's Football Power Index, also known as the FPI Index, percentages and be able to convert that into American odds and be able to use those odds to determine whether or not any sports books are offering favorable bets or not. So hope that you find this video valuable. And I think it is just in time for college football really to kick off. So the model is pretty simple. It's just a drop in of ESPN's daily lines page. And then from there, we have some formulas in this table to calculate our odds. And I do have an adjust manual adjustments column. So if you want to tweak the current FPI percentages based on your own um, modeling or intuition or whatever your, your insights are into specific college football matchups. And then we'll get an adjusted percentage. We'll convert that into American odds. And we also are going to pull in the width of each college football game just to know how much variance right now is in the lines that are offered. And from there, we'll be able to use the Kelly criteria to know what the optimal betting percentage is is based on the adjusted win percentage through the model and so let's let's flip over to espn i'll show you what to grab and then we'll drop that into the model and get started okay i'm over on espn.com college football slash lines if you go to ncaa football and then scroll down to the daily lines page you can see that's the table we're going to look at that has the fpi rating so all we're going to do is just copy this into our excel formula so just start grabbing it pull it down Labor Day weekend, so we have a lot of different days and games offered. So make sure you grab everything that you want to bet on. Go down to the very end, copy that, and then we'll flip back to our model. All right, we're back over on our Excel workbook. I'm going to go ahead and just control B to copy in what we had on ESPN.com. Copied in the values, and you can see we have all these <laughs> icons of every single uh, team mascot. So in order to get rid of that, you're actually going to go up to home then you go to find and select and then you're going to go to go to special and then it's going to bring up this go to special dialog box click objects click ok that selects every single object and then you can just click delete and that gets rid of them so that's just a helpful tool to know because if you're ever copying in stuff and it brings in additional icons that you don't want you can do that you could also do the control V, bring it in, and then do this control option here. And then just do the match destination formatting. I already had it copied in and brought in the nice clean format. If you do that second option, it'll bring it in and it'll look a little clunkier. So I would suggest at least doing that once to get these this nice table formatting from ESPN. And then you can just um, going forward, just do the control V and then just select that destination formatting here. So that's just some general guidelines on how to get the data in, but it's just a simple copy and paste. And so now we have all the different games coming up for Labor Day weekend. And we have all of the FPI percentages. So model is going to take this as our base and we are going to have the option to manually adjust it if we want. And then we're going to convert that to odds. And then we're going to pick up the width over here based on the money line. These are all the line and money line that's coming from Caesars.com. That's where we're going to get the width. And then we're going to actually be able to track if we place the bet or not. And then we'll, we'll have the Kelly criteria up at top. That'll tell us exactly how much to bet. So it, it may look kind of complicated at first, but it, it really is pretty simple. And I think this is going to be super useful. You don't even have to use ESPN percentages if there's other websites that you like to have the win percentages from you can use this as a basis and build a model um, replicating the logic i have here but for a different website but i wanted to use espn since i think that's probably the most common and really simple to to get rolling with so first thing is we have a data table to the right and that is just going to be picking up our formula so there's unfortunately it's not a clean copy and you can see we have different days and we have time to the games. And so in order to make this easier to sort and to be able to track, um, I created this data table to be able to convert this more into digestible view so you can see what the percentages are and the odds. 
So the first formula I have here is if is number F17, then I'm going to pull B17. Otherwise, I'm going to keep it blank. So that is just saying if we have an FPI percentage in column F, I want to pull the column B, which is going to be our teams. So that's just copied down the rest of the way. So you can see here it says FPI. That's not a number. So we're going to pull the blank value. So that's the matchup column. And then just drag that all the way down to grab all the games. And then this manual adjustment, you can just leave that blank. I like to format it with a, a dark blue font just to show like it's an input value. So type in 0.5 there and you can see it, it just it, it makes an adjustment to this adjusted percentage column. So that's just, this is for your own benefit. If you don't want to just take the ESPN FPI values at face value, if you want to use that as your basis, and then be able to tweak them as you see fit. Uh, the model is going to allow you to do that. And then the next column is going to be this adjusted percentage column. So this is going to be our ending value that we're going to use for our modeling purposes to be able to convert to odds and place bets based off of. So the formula I have in there is if is number. So going back to that, using this FPI column, is number F17, then I'm going to take F17 plus K17. So I'm going to take the FPI number plus the manual adjustment column. And that formula is just going to drag down the rest of the way. Make sure that you keep these um, at 100%. So if you do a, a plus 2% here, you need to do a minus 2% on the UCF Knights just to make sure that <laughs> your percentage is still out up to 100 and then the odds formula. So this one is converting our percentages into American odds. So the formula there is if L17 is less than 0.5, then I'm going to take 100 times 1 minus L17 divided by L17. Otherwise, we'll take negative 100 times L17 divided by 1 minus L17. So that is just converting probability percentages into American odds. That's the formula there drag that down the rest of the way. And you can see if I have that if error. So if it's an error, like we have in this cell where it's just blank, it'll just bring in a blank value. So grab that formula, drag it down. And then the final one, which is a little bit more involved, but this is, I think, a really important part of the, the model is to identify the market with. So you can see Kent State UCF, 2,000 on the underdog can stay at 10% win percentage. And then we have 10,000 as our favorite, the UCF Knights with about a 90% win percentage. So that's a massive market width. You can see it's 8,000 here. And so a good rule of thumb, I would say, is to target money line offerings that are around that 50 market width. Otherwise, you're going to be betting on some massive underdogs. And there's just going to be a lot of variance within that. And even though the model may say, oh, this is a, a good bet, the reality is it, it's such a small percentage. If you're not willing to wait out several, you know, get enough data of going several college football seasons of utilizing the model, uh, you're going to get frustrated because you're going to be losing all these underdog bets that maybe the model says, oh, well, they had a 5% chance. And they're getting odds that are saying they only have a 2% chance. And so it seems like a really good bet. But in the long run, that's uh, there's so much dis discrepancy with those massive with money lines. I like to use about 50 um, college football, especially these first couple of weeks. There's going to be a lot of non-conference games that are going to have some massive whiffs. And it's best just to avoid those. Um, yeah, maybe one of them will hit in a season. But uh, over the course of time, it's best to just stick with um, tighter lines. So like this Florida, Utah 35 with that's a that's a a more certain outcome and a bet that you should be placing or a game that you should be looking at to place bets on. This Nebraska, Minnesota, that's a conference game. So 57, even though it's a little bit outside the 50 target, I still think that's a, a play you could look at. Same with Louisville, Georgia Tech. So if they're uh, within the same conference and they're major tier programs, then, you know, that 50 doesn't have to be a hard and fast, but definitely like the 8,000 and even this 250 or 170, those would be games I would, I would avoid looking at. So the formula I have in here, sorry for that little side tangent on market with, but just want to say it is, 
important to pick that up as another objective way to value your college football betting opportunities. All right, looking at the actual width formula now, I'm going to have it pulled up here. It's a pretty long formula. I'm not going to talk about all the logic and read through it, but basically I wanted to create a way that's just going to pull in the width, um, both sides of the, the matchup, and then it's going to look and say, hey, if, if there's not a, a number on both these two rows, then it's it's not a game, and so it's just going to return a blank value. So take a pause here, grab that formula, Make sure if you have different rows than I have here to, to adjust accordingly, but <clears throat> it is a long formula. Grab it, put it into your model, drag it down. <clears throat> and then the final column I have here is just a, a bet place, and I'm just drop down of yes, no. So that is just a, if you're, especially with college football, looking at this FPI, just doing this copy paste in each day. And saying, okay, I'm going to go ahead and place a bet now. I like how the lines are playing out and the percentages. It's just a nice, easy way to say, okay, I've already bet on the Utah Utes. And so you would just not want to keep placing the same bet on the Utah Utes if each day it's the model the FPI percentage is is favorable based on what the sports books are offering. So um, just a quick, easy way to, to, you could do a filter and say, I'm just going to remove all yeses so you know not to continue to look at the Florida Utah Utes game, for example. So that's the that's the table. Um, it does have I, I made it a table t data table. So once you get all the formulas copied in, you can just control shift and highlight your your whole table, and then just do a control T to actually make it a table. And you can change the the de design however you like. But that is the model itself. And then up top, we're going to have the Kelly criteria to be able to look at what odds are getting offered by sports books and say, okay, what, what should be the wager amount that we should place? So we'll, we'll flip over um, to look at a, a line offering website and be able to identify if we see any bets that make sense based on these FPI percentages. So we'll take a pause here and then we'll flip over um, to sportsbookreview.com to look at different line offerings on some of these these games and see if there's any favorable odds being offered. So we'll take a pause here and flip over and check. Okay, I'm over at sportsbookreview.com. And you go up to the odds section and you can see that we have NCAA football. Click that. And then we have point spread, money line totals. We want the money line lines. And this does a really nice clean view of by day, by matchup, and by sportsbook what odds are being offered right now. So let's look at this Florida Utah game we saw on the previous on our model that that width on that game was under that 50 threshold. So you can see our best line on and highlights in blue what the best line offered is right now. We've got plus 180 on Florida and we have minus 190 at Bet Rivers on Utah. So let's plug in this minus 190 in our model for Bet Rivers on Utah to win the money line and see what that comes up with. Okay, we're back at our model. Go ahead and go up here to this bet log and calculations. Let's grab our Utah Utes, plug that in. That was on Bet Rivers. I just have a drop down of all the main sports books offered in the state of Iowa. That's where I live. Put in Bet Rivers, and the odds offered was minus 190. So it says the wager $58.60 based on that money line of minus 190. That's what the Kelly. Adjustment factor of 0.25 and account value of a thousand. So really favorable line offering based on what ESPN is calculating as far as win percentage. So I have here sportsbook odd percentage. So I'm converting similar to what we did where we converted percentages to American odds. This is converting American odds to percentages. So doing the reverse. So this minus 190 is saying that Bet Rivers is giving. Utah is 65.5% chance to win. However, based on the FPI model, it's saying that Utah actually is a 73.6% favorite. So um, that's where the value is coming in. And that's why the model, the Kelly criteria is saying to, to bet so heavily on this offering. And so uh, that's how to utilize it. That's an example of this is a bet you could place for 
the Florida Utah game and feel pretty confident that you have an objective way of measuring that and be able to come up with the correct wager amount. And so the Kelly criteria here, I have the formulas for everything. So this is just the percent of bankroll, but this adjustment percentage, all we're doing there is just looking up in our table, this adjusted percent column. So this 73.6%, that is the Utah Utes. And so we could change that to say, well, actually that seems a little bit aggressive. Let's take out 5%. So now it's down to 68.6. You can see our wager amount went down to 22.35. Let's take out 10%. And now it's saying no bet that Sportsbook said that 65.5% likelihood of Utah winning. Now the FPI model with our 10% adjustment is now saying it's only 63.6%. So it's a break even odds of minus 175 or well, minus 190 is unfavorable to that. So it's saying no, do not place that bet, but we can just remove that and we get back to where we were where it's saying place a 58.6 dollar bet on that. So that is where the adjusted percents coming from. And then decimal odds, we're converting the odds offered from Bet Rivers to American odd, to decimal odds. And so here's the formula for that. Sportsbook percentage, we already talked about that. And then our account value and Kelly adjustment factor. So then we get to the expected value percentage formula. And so that's picking up our adjusted win percentage with the odds offered. And so the expected value is and the Kelly criteria is basically a way of looking at the chances of you actually hitting on this plus the value that you're getting with the wager. So we have a large dis disparity between what the percentage the sportsbook's offering versus what we're saying the chances of us hitting. So it this is why it's such a a high dollar amount for this bet. And then it's actually 5.86% of our bankroll there. And then you can see the bet size, which matches our wager amount. So that is a way to value each one of your, your college football bets. I hope that this has made sense to everybody. Feel free to leave comments in the on the page if you have any feedback or if you want me to go into more detail. And I do have um, an NFL model that looks very similar. It's utilizing ESPN's FPI model. And then this is actually a converts into a sports betting tracker dashboard that I have built. So all this is available on my Etsy page. I'll have a link in the description, Excel help now. And yeah, that's all I have for today. So thank you. Um, please like, and subscribe. If you want, like all this sports betting content, a lot of what I do is going to be taking sports betting concepts and building models in Excel. So you can have um, objective ways of placing sports bets and feel confident and hopefully be able to make money in the long run. So thank you for watching and God bless.